Welcome to section 9.4 day three, graphing quadratic functions in intercept form. So the factored form of quadratic equations, the other day we were factoring to solve, so we're just extending onto that. When we factor a quadratic equation, we put it in factored form. And we can use factored form to graph the equation. Because remember when we factor them, we find solutions. We find out where our quadratic or parabola crosses the x axes. So our factored form of a quadratic equation is the form y equals a x minus p x minus q. The x-intercepts, the roots, also we call these solutions, are the number p comma zero and q comma zero. The axis of symmetry is halfway between these intercepts. The halfway between these halfway between these solutions. So to find AOS, we just take the p plus the q and divide by two. And recall that if the parabola opens up if the a is greater than zero. And then if it opens down if a is less than zero. That applies for here also. Because factored form, we can bring that out front. So here we have, use these steps to graph an equation and that's in factored form. Here we have y equals two, x plus one in parentheses, x minus five in parentheses. So hopefully notice right away that we have a a is two, so we know this thing's gonna open up. And we have x plus 1 and x minus 5. It says find the intercepts, find the axis of symmetry, find the vertex, and then connect the points. Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Some of you might understand it. You just pull the opposite signs up for your intercepts or set the factors equal to 0, whichever makes most sense to you. Um, it is easy to make mistakes on this. I will set them equal to 0. So if we have x plus 1 equals 0, we find that x is negative one. Notice the opposite sign. If x minus five equals zero, we get x is five. So we know that we cross the x axis at negative one and five. We know that our graph opens up. We wanna find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is halfway between our intercepts. So we just have to find the average of the intercepts. So our AOS is x, equals negative one plus five divided by two. This is four over two, which is two. So we have an AOS, our axis of symmetry is x equals two. So we have an AOS, we have our two intercepts. The last thing we need to find is our vertex. We can just plug two back into our factored form and solve for y. So y equals two, two plus one, and two minus five. And when we solve this, we get y equals two times three times negative three, which is negative 18. So our vertex, our all important vertex is a point to negative 18. All right, so we know a couple things. We have a vertex, we have our ALS, we have two points where it crosses the x-axis across at negative one and five. So we can use these to graph this. One of those things that can be confusing when you do this, you'll notice that this opens up. If it opens up, that means our vertex is below the x-axis. So when we do a graph of this, we wanna put our x-axis way toward the top, like so, because we know our vertex has to be below it. Make sure you label everything. We have our x-axis. We have our y-axis. We know we are crossing at negative one and we are crossing at five. So we know we cross here. We know we cross here. We know our vertex is at two negative 18 and our AOS is at two. So I'm gonna put my AOS in here. This is my AOS. Um, this graph would get really large. I don't think I can fit negative 18 on here. Although I might be able to. Let's see. Our vertex is actually right here. And then we just connect our intercepts with our vertex, like so. Arrows on the ends label the vertex. So we know our vertex is there, we know our AOS is there. And this is graphing off of factored form. So instead of having to find a couple of points here and there, we factor it, we find our intercepts. We take half the distance between the two intercepts, put in our AOS, 
use that x value to find the vertex. So this one, we only have three points. We'll have the vertex and two intercepts, connect them, make sure you label everything, arrows on the ends. We'll do a couple of these to get some practice. Here it says factor and graph y equals negative two x squared plus two. Well, with this one, <clears throat> always look for GCF when you do these, it'll make it easier again. We have negative two x squared plus two, we can pull out a two, but since our leading coefficient is negative, I'm going to pull out a negative two. And we get y equals negative two. We have x squared minus one. The x squared minus one is a difference of squares, so we can factor it to become x minus one, x plus one. All right, so here's our factored form. y equals negative two, x minus one in parentheses, x plus one in parentheses. And then we find our intercepts off of this. Some of you will see it right away, but if you don't see it, set your factors that have variables in them equal to zero. So x minus one equals zero, x plus one equals zero. And when you solve both of them, you get x is one, x is negative one. So here's my intercepts. Those are my zeros, my solutions. We have different names for them, all meaning the face of the same thing. So there is where I cross. The axis of symmetry is halfway between. Quite often when we graph, we can eyeball it. Halfway between negative one and one is zero. So we know our axis of symmetry is x equals zero. If you don't see it, or if it's not a nice one, you just take AOS is x equals the two. So one minus one over two, we find the average. This is zero over two, which is zero. If you can eyeball it, eyeball it, but tell me this piece right here. If you need to solve for it, solve for it. So we know our axis of symmetry is going right along the y axes. All right, so this is my OS. This is my x axis, by the way, this is my y axis. So now we are going to plug in zero into either our original equation or the factored form, it doesn't matter which one you use. It all depends which one you're more comfortable with. I'm gonna use the original, it's easier a little bit. So y equals negative two on this one it is anyway. We get zero squared plus two, and this just becomes two. So our vertex is the point zero two. Make sure you tell me what this is. So our vertex is right here and label it. One thing you should hopefully know already from looking at our initial function is our a is negative two, which means we open down. And that should tell you right there that we have a vertex is above the x axis, which it is. We're opening down, we're going through our intercepts. And there is my graph from factored form. Our factors will tell us where our x intercepts are. We find our vertex in AOS. We find the axis symmetry between halfway between our two intercepts. From the AOS, we find our vertex, plot those three points, connect with a smooth curve. Make sure you're telling me these things and that you're labeling. If you have to factor, show me your factors. Show me your intercepts. So I want you to see these things when you guys solve. I need to see your two intercepts, axis symmetry and vertex all have to be labeled and stated. So it's your turn to try one of these before I let you loose on the worksheet today. So it says graph y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. Please try this. So pause your video, try it. See if you can find your different pieces. Remember, you need to find your intercepts first. So factor it. Find your intercepts. From your intercepts, halfway between for your AOS. From your AOS, find your vertex. Plot your vertex and your two intercepts, and then connect. Also plot your AOS and show me where it is. All right, first thing, we have a leading coefficient of one, so we just need to find what multiplies to 12 that adds to eight to factor. And we get that y equals x plus six and x plus two. Some of you should be able to see right away that we're gonna take the opposite signs out. So our intercepts, or our solutions are at x equals negative six and x equals negative two. These are our solutions, or our roots. So we know we're gonna cross at negative six and negative two. When you look at this, it shows that we have a positive x squared. So that means that we are going to move, we're going to open up 
If we open up, that means our vertex is below the x-axis. So if I give you a graph and you know the vertex is below the x-axis, we're going to put the x-axis at the top of our graph. Maybe not at the tippy top, but toward the top. And now I can plot my points, uh, negative 2 and negative 6. And you guys should hopefully see that halfway between negative 2 and negative 6, our AOS, using the eyeball method, is negative 4, which is right here. And you could also do this by math, by the algebra part, where you say negative 6 minus 2 divided by 2. Would be negative 2 would be negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. This is my AOS. So we know that x is negative 4. We're going to plug it in either to our factored form or our two original. In this case, I'll use my factored form just so you can see what it looks like. So we have negative 4 plus 6. We have negative 4 plus 2. And we solve it. And we get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So we go from negative, our vertex is at negative 4 negative 4 which is right here and we connect we label the vertex and we are done but I want to see this again I want to see this I want to see where your solutions are I want to see that you solve for your vertex and your labels on your graph that is all for section 9.4 day 3 we are Graphing from factored form. This is a way that works really nicely if you have nice factors. When you do your worksheet today, you'll notice number, the last one can be a little difficult. Use your calculators to make the calculations. Um, thank you for watching and have a nice day.